Hello everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. And today I'll be sharing on Do Buddhists Worship Idols? Before I do that, I'd like to introduce to you the Buddha statue behind me. That is the statue of um, Truku Drapa Gelson. Blessings. Right. Back to the topic. Do Buddhists worship idols? Well, as you, um, as Buddhists, we walk the spiritual path in accordance with the teachings of Buddha Shakyamuni, who had gained enlightenment uh, under the Bodhi tree uh, over 2,500 years ago. And in enlightenment, the Buddha saw the truth of existence and also understood the way out of suffering in samsara. In samsara, it means that um, it's within these um, six realms that um, we keep taking rebirth in, depending on our karma. The six realms being the god realm, the demigod, the human realm, the animal realm, the hungry ghost realm, and the hell realm. So, um, depending on the karma that um, we've created, you know, in our current lives or our past lives, that um, during the, uh, at the time of death, then um, we will depend on the karma that um, we get reborn into which realm and into what conditions. So, as such, um, karma is actually the law of cause and effect. Um, let me share with you the picture of the Buddha so that um, you may enjoy the picture while I do my sharing. Here you go. That's a Buddha in a garden and look at that, you know, scenery and it's so peaceful and calming. So back to what I was sharing at, karma. Karma is actually the law of cause and effect, you know, where our actions of thought speech and physical actions will create the results that we live in. You know, as such, we are the one to have to take responsibility of our own actions to create the conditions that we wish to live in. The Buddha, although enlightened, is not able to absolve us of our karma. And as such, we will have to experience the effects ourselves the effects of our the actions that we have taken. Therefore, the only way out of suffering is to gain enlightenment. For example, you know, an example of the effect would be, um, let's say we were to hit someone. Then the person will get angry and hit us back. So that is the result of karma which we will experience quite immediately because once they hit us, we experience it. Or um, if we were to hit them and that person were to get angry but did not take the action, but you know, uh, uh, maybe further down the road or further down our lives or maybe even the next life, we get hit by someone, then we suffer the karma or the results of our actions, you know, in further down. So no matter what, um, whether it's now or in the future, the results will still be suffered by us. And also, um, it may not be in the form of being hit. It could be um, in the form of, well, it, it will have to be in a form of suffering. So it could be in a, another form that um, we will suffer this karma. So, when, you, when we go deeper into karma, which I will share further down um, in my sh uh, live streams, then we will understand better you know, how we should really uh, avoid creating karma that we do not want to suffer, either in the near future or in our future lives. So, in... Buddhism, and as I, as I mentioned, the only way that we can get out of suffering 
and not experience any karma anymore is to gain full enlightenment. So in Buddhism, we seek refuge in the three jewels, which is the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. The Dharma is uh, what Buddha has taught and the Sangha are the people who, are, who took on vows, who renounced uh, from the, our, the daily lives to fully focus on the path that Buddha has taught. And we take refuge in them because they hold Buddha's enlightened qualities within them. I, I, I mean, you know, like um, Buddha in his um, enlightenment has um, gained the path or the knowledge of the way out of suffering. So as such, we take refuge in them as in we rely on Buddha's teachings to, for a way out. So the Sangha, because they being the practitioners of Buddha's teachings, then we can rely on them in, such, in that they hold Buddha's teachings, that they may be able to guide us in our path. In our mind, we invite the Buddha to our space for blessings. As such, a Buddha statue is actually a representation of these enlightened qualities of the Buddha. To a Buddhist, the worship of the Buddha is really paying homage, respect or devotion to the Buddha and what Buddha represents. And actually we don't um, do that. It, it's not the stone or the metal statue that we are actually um, paying homage to, but it's a representation of the enlightened Buddha and enlightened qualities of the Buddha and it's an example that um, it's like a reminder to ourselves that um, we too have that potential to become a Buddha ourselves you know just as Buddha did when he was a man So in the Buddha statue, you know, we are reminded of Buddha's enlightened qualities of compassion, the wisdom, and his three aeons of virtuous practice, his selflessness in gaining enlightenment to overcome worldly sufferings. And then he taught in 84,000 methods for beings in samsara to have that possibility, that path, to gain the way out of suffering. So as Buddha, Buddhist practice meditation and also we recite prayers as part of our spiritual path, so the Buddha's statue serves as a visual guide for us to focus and train our concentration instead of you know, the distraction of our minds. So over time, you know, with practice, the distractions can be eliminated as we practice on our focus and our concentration. So less distraction will bring us, bring our, um, draw our attention away from, um, you know, as Buddhists, we will be um, under, trying to gain that mental clarity to understand the wisdom of Buddha's teachings. And also, it will be very helpful um, in our daily lives because um, with mental clarity, then we can see any obstacles or any problems, problems that arise uh, with, um, clearly and also to be able to find a solution to solve it better. And when a person gazes upon the Buddha statue, you know, one will create the karmic imprint in his subconscious mind that may be in the future, with the right conducive conditions, this karma may open for the person to be near or to receive the Dharma from a Buddha or a, or a guru who we 
treat as a representation of the Buddha or in a human form. So this can happen in the future because of the, the imprints that we create in our mind when we see a Buddha statue. And also when we look upon a Buddha statue, you know, one will immediately gain a sense of calm and peace. These feelings inspire us to think, yes, there is such a thing as enlightenment, that even from a, Buddha, from a statue that of an enlightened one, which is the Buddha, we are able to gain that sense of tranquility. So understanding that the Buddha never gave any guarantees or said that just by prayer, we may eliminate our sins or karma. Actually, in fact, the Buddha has said we have to take responsibility for our own actions to gain the karma we wish to experience in our life. So just as anyone who loves or admires someone, you know, like our parents, or maybe, you know, for our youngsters, the pop stars that we like, or maybe an actress that we admire. You know, we can also keep the image of a Buddha as someone whom we admire and respect. As we recite prayers to the Buddha, we visualize the enlightened qualities that we too wish to attain. And in abiding in those thoughts, we spend less time on negative thoughts of selfishness. Actually, one, uh, as I was um, searching through for, for the, uh, you know, on this topic, I found this, um, this uh, sentence, I mean, this uh, um, mention that um, I would like to share with everyone, you know, how pervasive actually Buddha is. So th it, this is uh, what it says is, once a general left an image of the Buddha as a legacy to Winston Churchill, the general said, if ever your mind gets perturbed and perplexed, I want you to see this image and be comforted. So can you imagine how a Buddha statue could actually help a general during wartime? that um, he can gain that peace and calm to overcome his um, trouble, troubled mind, you know, to actually guide um, his, his um, army during the war. And this is what he left to Winston Churchill, you know, from England during the World War II. So that is just something that I found um, quite impressive. So a Buddha image is a symbol not of a person but of Buddhahood, that to which all men can attain but actually feel do. The possibility of Buddhahood is not only for one person but actually it's for everyone. Each and every one of us have that Buddha nature within us. And if we were to apply Buddha's teachings in our lives, we too may practice and attain the same as Buddha, the Buddha, which is enlightenment. Having said that, it is actually not compulsory for every Buddhist to have a Buddha image to practice on. Those who actually have very good um, mind, who, who have actually who can control their mind or their senses, you know, during their prayers or meditation, you know, and can focus, then of course they do not need an object to train their mind and to focus on. So it really depends on the state of our mind. And it would be easier that um, we have a Buddha statue to focus our attention on during our meditation or prayer because um, then we will make, we need to make that less, that much less effort, you know, on our concentration, but, and we can concentrate more on our, our practices. So the answer to our troubled world is 
actually found in Buddha's teachings, which is applicable to um, our daily lives. So as you can see, the Buddha picture, how Buddha is meditating in, a, in tranquility with the water features in, within the garden. So how peaceful that is, that even for a statue, you know, um, Buddha's enlightenment comes through, you know, that, that gives us that peace, that calmness within us. And with that, I will end my sharing session for today. And thank you for sharing your time with me. And I will end this with a completion dedication in Tibetan. Jang Jop Sen Jong Rinpoche, Ma Ke Pa Nam Ke Yu Shi, Ke Pa Nam Pa Me Pa Yang, Go Ni Go Nu Pe Wa Shu, To Ni To Wa Rinpoche, Ma Ke Pa Nam Ke Yu Shi, Ke Pa Nam Pa Me Pa Yang, Go Ni Go Nu Pe Wa Shu, Da So Ji Ni Sa Pa Ge Wa Di, Da Dan Trung Wa Guna Gam Pa Dang, Je Pa Je Su No San Tra Pa Yi, Tam Ping Yi Po Rin Tu Sa Se Shu, Ke Wa Kun Tu Yen Da La Ma Dang, Tra Me Cho Ki Pa La Long Cho Ching, Sa Dam Lang Yi Yot Te Ra Zon Ne, To Je Chang Yi Ngo Pa Ngo Tu Su, Ke Wa Di Yi Yo Du Da La Ma San Yi Du Yo Ne, Tru Wa Chi Kya Ma Lu Pa De Yi Sa La Go Pa Choki kya posun ka pa, chosu nam pa pe wala Keki sama si wadang, tunki malu sang wa sho Dadam sung yi dusun da, dre wa song yi la te ni Ge wa lao san trapa yi Tampa yu ri va gyu shi Ni mo de le sin de le, ni mingu nyan de le shi Ni sin ta tu de le peo Kuncho sung yi jinggi lo, kuncho sung yi ngotro so Kuncho sung yi tra si sho Jesu nama kusen rap ting ching Nam ka tri ni cho shu ke pa dang Lo sam tempe dro mi sab sung yi Dro yi mun sa ta tu ni gyu shi Gang wai rao wai ko wai shin kam de Pendan de wa ma lu gyo ni Che ren si wan ten sing gat so yi Sha pe shi de ba du de ng gyu shi Kum tong pe ngot ru ma lu pa Den de da la sao du so Ko dan de pa long chot nam Ke pa su shi shuk ten sao Thank you I'll see you again